car prices are going to crash in 2025. Dad dealers are starting to discount heavily and manufacturers are picking up their incentives. And so far in 2024, we've seen new cars, a specific focus on new car, new car prices come down significantly. And our expectation is that trend will continue in 2025. How can we say such a thing? Well, let's talk about what's going on here in 2024. The chart on the screen, dad, we got a yellow line and a blue line. The blue line's going down. The yellow line's going up. Let's make sense of all of that. The yellow line shows you the percentage of the average transaction price that is made up of incentives when you buy a vehicle. So pre-pandemic, Dad, if I was buying a $50,000 truck, I would expect about $5,000 in incentives from the manufacturer to help me purchase that vehicle. So I'd buy it for $45,000. That number dropped as low as 2% during the height of the chip shortage and the pandemic, and now it's back to 7.2%. That's good news for car shoppers and an indication why in 2025 prices will continue to go down, correct? I would agree with you. Yes. We should continue to see incentives escalate and average transaction prices coming down. The reason for that is simple. Inventory build up at most dealerships. Not all brands. I can't sit here and tell you prices are going to crash at Toyota or Honda, but I can tell you the prices are going to crash at most brands because inventory is going to build up. Average transaction prices are going to come down and the percentage of those transaction prices covered by incentives will probably grow to close to 10% in 2025. Yeah, the uh, the logic here is fairly straightforward. You have incentives going up. Why would incentives be going up? And you also have, let's be very clear, dealer negotiability and discounting going up. Why would they be going up? Because there's an economic pressure on dealers and manufacturers to sell more cars. What is that economic pressure? Floor plan cost, man. It is expensive to have vehicles sit on your lot for a long, long time. We've done plenty of videos explaining floor plan costs, but the high level is that most dealers do not pay cash for their inventory. So, you know, there's a great example of a uh, dealership, a uh, Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram dealership in, uh, what was it, South Carolina or North, North Carolina? Carolina. North in Carolina. In North Carolina that essentially like handed back their dealer franchise license and is trying to sell back $180 million worth of vehicles to Stellantis. Like, imagine the finance charge on $180 million worth of vehicles. It adds up as vehicles sit. So there's an economic reason why dealers are incentivized to lower their prices. And why do they need to lower their prices? Or why are the vehicles sitting? Because the prices of the cars are too damn high. So like, there's your logic train. It's pretty, pretty clear what's going on. And this is after multiple years of prices going up, incentives going down, inventory turning over very quickly. It's almost like the new car market's healing a little bit. And that's why I, at least I dad expect prices to go down in 2025. And, and there is one other element to add to this. And that element is that in a recent Edmonds survey, they found that that 73 percent of the public out there doesn't feel as if they can participate in the new car market anymore because the prices are too damn high. People are looking more for entry level vehicles and manufacturers with a shrinking customer base are are going to have to consider offering lower priced vehicles. And if they don't want to offer lower priced vehicles, then they're going to have to offer larger incentives to get those vehicles sold. Okay, so that's the new car side of things. We expect new car prices to crash for most brands in 2025. Used cars, totally different story because there's actually a shortage of quality used cars. And that Edmunds data that you referenced just a moment ago, Dad, there are more customers who want to purchase under $15,000 used cars, about half of used car purchasers want to buy an under $15,000 used cars, used car, excuse me. However, the number of transactions that take place at that price point, it's less than 10%. So there is a huge gap here from an affordability standpoint for used vehicles. And I think for that reason, we will continue to see quality used cars command a premium, both at the dealer's lots and at the wholesale auctions. And so will used car prices crash in 2025? I don't think so. And even the latest data we got from Black Book at the wholesale auctions showed there was a slight appreciation of used car value use week over week. So new cars feels pretty straightforward. They're going to, the prices are going to go down for pretty much everything except for maybe like, you know, highest in demand Toyotas, Hondas, et cetera. But used car prices, it feels a little messier to me, or at least like not as much of a buyer's market because there's just not as much quality supply. I wouldn't anticipate any significant downward trend in pre-owned cars. And the reason for that is twofold. One, the number of lease vehicles coming back it will be suppressed for the next year and a half, two years, because there was a limited amount of leasing that took place two and three years ago. 
The other reason is that the average trade-in that dealers are seeing today from their customers is six plus years old. Well, at six plus years old, that's not considered a young, low mileage vehicle. So if the vehicles being traded in are older and there's no lease returns coming back, premiums will have to be paid for those younger, low mileage vehicles, which will mean used car prices will remain high for young, low mileage vehicles and maybe, maybe somewhat lower uh, for slightly older vehicles. Now, one other factor impacting affordability in 2025 will be interest rates. And by the time you're watching this video, the Fed will have announced a, a slight decline in the federal funds rate. And so we anticipate in 2025 auto loan interest rates and lease money factors to continue to go down at least a little bit. I don't think there's an expectation of a huge drop in lease, uh, lease money factor rates or finance rates for new and used cars, but it should go down a little bit. And so that should helpful, hopefully improve affordability. New car prices will be going down here at the end of 2024, and they will absolutely go down in 2025 with some of those ex exceptions that we mentioned before. Used car prices, it's a little muddier, but I think what you said sums it up nicely, Dad. And interest rates, I think generally good news for consumers, but maybe not as big of declines as we might expect or want. Well, it, at least for used car customers, it might make those slightly overpriced used cars a little more affordable because interest rates will have come down a little bit. One other storyline in 2025, Dad, will be negative equity. So if you are going in to trade your vehicle, you need to be prepared that the vehicle you're trying to sell the dealership might be worth less than your auto loan. So that could be another factor that impacts the demand side of things here. A lot of shoppers are obviously sitting on the sidelines from that Edmunds data that we talked about a moment ago, but they're also going to be on the sidelines when they realize there may be five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars upside down on that vehicle they purchased during the height of the pandemic. So the market's shifting, things are changing. That's another factor that could influence what happens to new and used car prices in 2025. And definitely, if you're thinking about buying a vehicle in 2025, something you should be aware of before you head into the dealership. Do not, don't walk in blindly for your trade-in. Do your research. Go to caredge.com slash sell. There's no reason to, to not be informed when you go to trade-in or sell your vehicle. And, and Zach, high negative equity is another reason why we'll see fewer younger, lower mileage vehicles, because those people who bought cars two and three years ago and paid a premium are the ones that are going to be holding the most negative equity. So they're not going to be able to trade. We're not going to be able to see those vehicles back in the marketplace anytime soon. Car Edge Concierge, the revolutionary way to buy your next car. You tell us what you want and our team of experienced concierges goes to work on your behalf. They source the vehicle, negotiate the price, and make arrangements to have it delivered to you directly. Never set foot in a car dealership again. CarEdge.com slash concierge to learn more about how you have the power to save both your time and money. Let the car buying revolution begin at CarEdge.